Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about CG Project's business model and how it relates to Gwent. If you go to their investor page on their website, there'll be a fact sheet for 2016. On that fact sheet is this business model graphic. It's, there's a link in the description if you want to read along or learn more information about the company. The, there are six elements on this business model and at the very top, the most important is player outreach. Underneath that is honest and direct communication with gamers. But you can already see this with, in Gwent through, on the subreddit and the Discord channel where the developers, the PR people, and the business people are answering our questions and giving us feedback. Of course, they're not going to tell us things that aren't set in stone that kind of be dishonest. They will sometimes say they can neither confirm nor deny something like um, a mobile version of Gwent. If they're not ready to tell us that, it might not even be set in stone yet. Another thing they have underneath player outreach is full control over messaging. So I'm not exactly sure what this means, but I think full control means uh, they have they either do it themselves or they have final say when a third party does something. And I think messaging is referring to marketing and public relations. I asked a question on Discord about this. When I get an answer about that, I'll tell you guys. Again, you can contact these uh, various people in CG Project Red to get more information about Gwent. And it, can't, it doesn't all have to be about uh, you know, card balance. You can also look at things like how they're going to handle Gwent. The next thing on their list is distribution. So they're talking about how they have global reach in 109 countries by carefully selecting retail distribution partners. Uh, in terms of Gwent, one of their biggest pushes is in China, they have selectly, carefully selected Gaia as their distribution partner there. And last time I heard at least. So China is a big virtual card market. They are uh, like Hearthstone's really popular there. CG Project Red wants to be our CG Project specifically, uh, more generally speaking, wants to be the third, one of the top three video game developers in the world. In order to do that, their games have to be competitive with those big, the big bruisers in the market. One of those big bruisers would obviously be Blizzard with their Hearthstone. So if you're going to get into the Chinese market, you have to be com competitive there. So we can expect a lot of marketing and push to make Gwent popular in that country. They also did uh, mark, uh, press events in Russia and all over Europe, in America and South America. Okay. Uh, they also put under here direct consoles and PC digital distribution, including our digital store, GOG. So they're not just putting their product on GOG. Gwent is starting off on GOG, but it is possible that it might expand to other digital distribution websites. We don't, I wouldn't expect the retail version of Gwent though, since it's a free to play game. But it is going on consoles. The next thing we have is publishing. Uh, CG Project Red is a developer and a publisher for its games. And at the core is Gamers First. Now, what does Gamers First mean in terms of uh, CG Project Red's games that probably matters to you guys most? Like their DRM free uh, philosophy. DRM is not um, a gamer friendly software because it's not, it doesn't make the game any better. It can often make the game worse. It only really benefits the business which, or the developer because the, it prevents piracy. That's not a problem for the gamer, that's a problem for the developer. This is, the part that uh, matters for Gwent players would probably be the way they price things and the quality of their expansions. So if you play Witcher 3, you probably know that Blood and Wine and Heart of Stone were huge expansions that were really worth the uh, bang for your buck. Especially Blood and Wine was just astronomically large for the price I paid. Um, with Gwent, we're probably going to see really high quality single player campaigns 
that are really worth the price you pay for them. From what I've heard on Reddit and uh, Discord, the purpose of the single player campaign isn't to give you a competitive advantage. So I don't think there will be single player only cards. There might be single player only card art, like a different version of like Geralt Igni that just, you know, different, different picture, that's all. But I don't expect, um, given what they've said on Reddit, I'm pretty sure they're gonna stick by, they're gonna stay honest and not make single player campaign a must for competitive play. Next thing, they're gonna have technology. The important things is how they make the card art, which is really where they're really pushing the envelope with card games. If you look at how they do the premium cards and what every card actually is, is actually a 3B, 3D card. There's a scene where a, like for instance, if you look at last rate, there is a monster doing this, uh, clawing at the screen. There's, that is a 3D art being rendered there. And when the premium version of the card is, you'll be able to see that the normal one is just like a standstill. And then you go to the premium, then you can see that all they did is make that thing move. It's still a 3D piece of art. I think that might be a reason why sometimes the frame rate drops when you zoom in on a card, especially for me, uh, who uses AMD and the game's kind of na naturally developed with N NVIDIA. Yes, uh, long story short, Gwent's technology is really, the interesting stuff they're doing is in the card art and we should expect really cool premium cards in the future not just the ones we have now. I think that's really gonna set Gwent apart from the other games is just how well and how interesting they make their premium cards. Development, I'm going on a little long. Uh, In-house development team, quality being absolute priority. We see this, uh, CD Projekt Red is doing their best, their in-house team really, there, there's three branches of CG Project Red, but in three different places on the world in the world. Like there's one in the like Los Angeles, I think. Um, I know there's one in California. And they all help make these you know, they're making the game that we're playing and we enjoy playing. And then final one here is our creation, IP ownership and full creative control. Now this full creative control is more like no other co private interest is affecting it, but there is the government affecting the way they have to design the game. So for instance, Peggy 14 prevents them from saying poor fucking infantry. Everybody's noticed this. Uh, you can't have horse on junior, you have to call him Wiley. We get that. The other thing is focus on two franchises and limited number of projects. Now two franchises actually is a step up from the past. CG Project was like only working on Witcher and Witcher games, which is one franchise. Cyberpunk 2077 puts them at two franchises, so this is actually doubling the amount of franchises they're working on. I'm really excited to see how many franchises they eventually get in the future. Whether or not, because I think that mostly that means that when they're done with the game, which probably Witcher will be done, they'll have to create a new franchise that can uh, be their other game other than Cyberpunk 2077. So if 20, Cyberpunk 2077 gets a sequel, there'll be something non-Witcher-like. So perhaps Gwent is their last Witcher game for a long time. Who knows? Uh, since they're limiting how many franchises they work si on simultaneously, they, are ex they did expand it to two technically, but we'll see. Without uh, further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this. That was the last element on their thing. Uh, tell me what your predictions are. Agree or disagree with my own. Tell me I was wrong about something, like I misinterpreted something. But for the most part, I think those were the important things. Okay. Have a great day.